OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, hello everyone. My name is Marjorie Olavides. I am a project specialist for the Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, also known as OTAN, and I'd like to welcome you all to this month's OTAN Tech Talk. Our speaker today is Yesenia Delgado from Hacienda La Puente Adult Education, and she's also an OTAN subject matter expert. And today she'll be sharing with us accelerated learning, five tech tools to try with adult learners. All right, so uh, Yesenia, take it away, please. Thank you, Marjorie, and welcome everyone. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to present to you. So today's topic is gonna to be accelerated learning and I'll be sharing five tech tools for adult education. Um, so as we know, accelerated learning programs are one of the fastest growing transformations in adult education and across higher education as well. So just a really quick review of our agenda. We're gonna be um, do a quick review of accelerated learning. Um, I'll talk about a couple of things that I look for in accelerated learning and why I picked those specific tools. And then we're gonna discuss the five tech tools um, that can be used in adult um, education. Um, we are not gonna be providing a specific training on those five tech tools, but um, they are gonna be available as um, trainings through OTAN that you can sign up for um, shortly after this presentation. So um, why accelerated learning? So accelerated learning programs are one of the fastest growing transformations. Um, as I said earlier, and it has really become a powerhouse um, that has absorbed the instructional process. Um, it really creates a highly um, engaging environment that's centered around learner needs. Um, so the purpose for me presenting today is really, um, you know, uh, some of the tools that I've selected and some of the technologies that serve as scaffolds to help students um, self regulate their own learning and why it's so important. Um, so one of the key things that I always talk about when it comes to changing our programs, right? So um, I'm really, I, I talk a lot about accelerated learning. I've helped um, different programs take their year long programs into um, shorter versions of them, 18 to 24 weeks when they were previously maybe 10 month programs. So I get really excited when I talk about this topic. It's really how much can um, I feed my students in what amount of time and it, does it really work? And really what I have found is that there are specific tools um, that we need to have in place and make sure that we're able to utilize those tools effectively so we can speed up that process of learning. Um, so one of the things that I always talk about is as instructors, keeping that really open mind, right? What are our perspectives about education? So as educators, we tend to really hold on to our educational perspectives, right? Um, and really what happens in accelerated learning, we really go from lecturing to facilitating, right? And a lot of our teachers, um, especially in adult education, we're, we're used to that lecturing model in front of the class. We're used to that typical face-to-face -face classroom that we forget that there's so many tools out there that can really help us um, switch over from that lecturing into a facilitating mode. Um, so when it comes to accelerated learning, it's really the responsibility of both the student and the instructor. Um, so we're gonna go through these really, really quick, but um, the results of accelerated um, intensive learning, um, really it's a little bit more focused um, and concentrated on the learning. It's more in-depth participation. Um, studies have shown that there's a improved performance, less procrastination from the students. They're not holding back from the work that they're doing. Um, we're not, you know, we're, we're kind of taking off all the fluff, right? We're not going over unnecessary um, details in the course. We're not filling in our time with the, all of those extra activities, but we're more focused and the objectives of the course and what they really need to learn in order for them to graduate from, from our course or complete the course, right? So what we have found through many studies is that there's a positive effect on future performance as well. They seem to grasp these concepts and they seem to be able to really um, be able to go into the job field and complete um, you know, some of these tasks that they're being asked to do. So 
here is my favorite tool. So we're going to talk about a couple of things before each tool. So one of the things that I look for um, when I'm um, looking at an accelerated learning course is I really look for um, combining core concept learning with a customized and personalized learning. So one of the key principles that aids in the concept of learning really comes from our old, um, you know, what we learned as educators from Vygotsky. And one of the things that he notes is that concepts are not works, but rather they're organized and intricate knowledge clusters. Um, so this is a really simple and really profound principle. It means that while we must teach in that linear fashion um, that we're used to, we must also present concepts individually and in really small clusters. And we need to apply these concepts to real life scenarios somehow. Um, accelerated learning really um, hones in on this. And really what we're looking for is um, making sure that we choose a learning management system that is able to provide this for us. Um, so making our thinking visible requires that students create you know, um, different activities, that they talk to each other, that they write, that they explain, that they analyze, that they judge um, um, what they're doing, um, that they report on what they have learned. And also we, we need to build in some time for them to inquire too, right? So these activities make it clear that students know and um, what they what knowledge they have gained. And it also allows for those activities to stimulate students' growth. So the learning management system becomes super important in the in this, uh, you know, as we're we're trying to promote accelerated learning. Um, we really want to make sure that we're fully utilizing those discussion forums, the blogging, the journals, the small work um, in a really organized fashion. So that's where we, we have to take our LMS and we have to make sure we organize it really well into those small clusters. Um, and it is a good idea to use our LMS to its fullest potential. So that means learning our LMS, right? How can we make all these activities happen within that LMS and taking advantage of that training? Um, so it, that way we can engage our learners um, and help them build those links between what they're learning um, with the assignments that we're providing in that learning management system. So my favorite learning management system, and I know um, there's a lot of them out there, there's tons of different technology that we can use, but the one that I wanted to introduce today that I absolutely love is NEO. NEO is a, a learning management system um, that Technology has really revolutionized the way our adult learners use uh, use the technology itself and how they approach learning. But Neo has a lot of benefits. Um, it is free, so educators can get a free account for up to two hundred users. Um, they are um, it's the the platform itself is really intuitive. It's really easy, and it is really visually appealing to the students. Um, it supports about 40 different languages, especially for our ESL teachers. Um, it's accessible um, on mobile apps. That's probably my favorite feature. The mobile application um, is amazing. I've seen it both on the student side and on the, the teacher side. I can literally, as an instructor, grade all of my assignments on my phone, and it's not like it's really easy to use. It's super flexible. Um, so I do love that feature, but my students love um, the Neo application on their phones. I've had students take my classes that only use their phone to do my entire course. And it's a career technical course with a lot of assignments, a lot of videos. So they they literally just use their phone. They, they have told me that they don't have a computer or a uh, an iPad or anything like that. And they just, they have used their phone, uh, their phone for the entire thing. So it's a really great program. Um, you know, as we build uh, in our learning management program that we use, we wanna make sure that it has the functionality that we need for our student and the program that we're teaching in, right? And just remember that even though you're using that learning management system, we also wanna make sure that we present um, we're present in the class itself through the learning management. Um, the other thing that I really look for is I, I try and build the self-efficacy of my students, right? We want students um, 
to require a lot of interaction and they must be able to take responsibility for their own learning. Um, so for a lot of our students, um, if it's not digital, it doesn't exist. So for a lot of them, if it's not accessible to them, you know, 24 hours a day, it doesn't exist. It doesn't help to have notes in a, a paper notebook because if they don't have it with them, they can't study. Um, so this means that content that students use has to be accessible at all times. Um, students want to learn or they want to be able to access what they know at, everywhere. And that's where the learning management system really helps. But one of the other key things that I love using is my tool number two, which is OneNote. And I love OneNote as a digital notebook. So I really use, because they're able to use it across all of their devices, there's a phone app for it too, um, and students are able to take notes and organize them. It is also a free application. Um, there is key features that they can purchase, but the key application works perfect. Um, it's basically a digital notebook. I highly encourage all of my students to have uh, a digital notebook and I actually require it for some of my classes where they share the notebook with me. And that's where I do some of my grading of their notes. They have to submit their notes. Um, I love making it an interactive notebook where we put charts, we put pictures. I've used it with literacy students where they literally build a picture dictionary on a digital notebook and, and it's, it's had great success. The other features that I do love about OneNote um, is that you can have handwritten notes. If the student has a tablet or their phone, they can do handwritten notes, they can do type notes, they can do drawings, they can do screenshots to upload on there, um, as well as voice recordings um, and then any video links that they want to add to there. So it's just the quick access. Um, and really, this just kind of builds on them developing their own self-study skills, them taking organization of their own notes. Um, the other thing that really helps with accelerating learning is those microcasts. As we discussed in the beginning of the presentation, it's so important to build it in small clusters. So microcasts are going to be your short um, podcast of um, no more than maybe five to 10 minutes. Um, I usually try and keep all of my videos under 15 minutes. So microcasts can be um, broken down longer lectures, right? Think about maybe doing smaller videos for those longer lectures. Um, having them really concise as part of your online content so students are able to review them again. This is a great way to front load a lot of the information that you're reviewing as well before they do come to your in-person class. So we can provide instruction before they even get there. Um, and the tool that I love using for that is Loom. So I create short uh, microcast videos uh, that are sh on the shorter end. Um, sometimes I have maybe four or five videos for one specific topic. It, it just depends. I usually utilize this to front load a lot of information. Um, I concentrate on specific parts of content. Um, this Loom application allows you to record, and there's other apps. This is one of my favorites, but there's other apps as well out there. But think about um, recording your, your video. You can record your computer, um, and uh, they have you have a little screen where your picture shows up. Um, so it allows you to record yourself, your camera, your microphone, your desktop. Um, and then it also allows you to instantly share your videos with your students through a link. So this is a really great um, application that allows you to upload into your LMS or to send over to your students to provide them with a little bit more knowledge that's uh, more specific, um, because that's what we want as we're um, trying to provide our students with as much information as possible. Um, we also want to be able to add self-assessment opportunities to our students, allowing students to take more responsibility for their own learning. So really remember, the key to accelerated learning is to move from our direct face-to-face um, -face instruction to a more collaborative learning environment where they're taking responsibility for their learning as well. 
Um, so we want to provide as many opportunities for self-assessment. Your learning management system may provide those, um, you know, through quizzes, through different assignments that you give. Um, but we really want to allow students to have the opportunity to grade their own knowledge, right? Um, and this will help them, um, you know, when we are able to kind of take a look at how we're doing, right? Um, it allows us an opportunity uh, to self-assess, and then it also encourages to build our own learning plans. Um, if you know you didn't do well on something, then you know you're, you're going to be coming back to class to an assessment, then you're more than likely to review those questions that you missed. One of my favorite tools for that, my tool number three is Quizlet. I love Quizlet. I use it, um, Quizlet Live. There's different um, things that are uh, or that you can do. The students have an opportunity to actually do flashcards on their own. Um, there's also a phone app that they're able to use. I usually put the links to my Quizlet in my learning management system so students can just click on it and access their flashcards immediately. Um, there's a quiz testing opportunities through Quizlet. So it really helps them prepare for a test. And then the best part about Quizlet that I love is um, students engage in these activities, but you can also do um, live features when you're in the class where you can take the quiz and either do individual um, you know, assessment or you can do group assessments where they're playing against the teams, against each other. So it's really a more of a study aid application that's designed to engage students, but it's also really a self-reflection tool where it allows students to see where they're at. So I do love using Quizlet, that's another um, tool. And we also wanna be able to provide our students with um, collaborative learning activities. Um, so collaborative learning activities is gonna help them build both on the social and academic goals. Not only does it enhance the learning experience and it helps them absorb that information, but it also connects them to the class. Um, and during uh, you know, those collaborative learning activities, they're engaging with the course, they're discussing, this is their time where they're able to really assess the learning and um, individualize it to, to how they wanna learn that material. Um, so what I like to do for collaborative learning, and this is actually my tool number five, I just realized it says tool number three, but this is tool number five, and this would be Padlet. So um, remember collaborative learning activities allows for opportunities for them to develop a learning community with the other learners in the class. So Padlet is a tool that enables that interaction and that collaboration, um, whether they're doing it individually or in the class, um, but it allows them to communicate um, with their students, their teachers, their peers. Um, it is a, it's, uh, so Palette is basically a digital board where the students can post their ideas. They can post comments. I love to use Padlet as a brainstorming um, board. Uh, so sometimes when I have a paper that's due or, or we're gonna be doing something, I use it as a brainstorming tool where everybody comes in and then they grab ideas from each other. Right, um, and that helps with their brief search. Um, I also use it as a closing activity to debrief from a topic. Um, so this helps our students uh, stay motivated and engaged um, and build their attributes that they need for that accelerated learning. Um, so this was actually my fifth tool, Padlet. Um, my biggest recommendation when it comes to accelerated learning is to do what works and keep searching for what works better. There's tons of tools. I shared with you the five tools that I love using, um, but there is lots of tools out there that we can use and we um, need to be able to modify that to what is our class like, right? So really accelerated learning is rooted in creating an environment that's conductive to higher order thinking skills and designed to connect the learner performance with direct outcomes. So the applications um, that are being used are endless. There's tons of apps um, and it's, it can be daunting, right? Because there's so many apps, there's so many ways that we can record videos. Um, there's no simple application that's perfect for every instructor or it's perfect for every learner to learn from. 
But um, the more applications we learn about, um, it allows us to kind of pick and choose what applications we feel are more interesting or what applications we feel are easier to use. And we're able to start using those um, from our students. Remember that, um, try it out, try it. Um, allow your students to try it with you and have fun with it. And then if it works, you keep, you know, you, you keep using it. Um, if not, there, there are other tools out there as well. Um, so thank you for allowing me this time to share um, these uh, five tools with you that I'm really excited about using in adult education. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to hand it back over to Marjorie. All right, thank you, Yesenia, for all that great information. And I would also like to thank all of you for coming to this OTAN Tech Talk. Uh, if you have an ed tech tool or some tips that you'd like to share with the adult education field, uh, go ahead and email your support your idea to support at OTAN.us. Uh, we also encourage you to subscribe to the OTAN YouTube channel where you can view archived tech talks as well as view other OTAN videos. You can contact OTAN for additional services, including free professional development at your site. Just visit the OTAN site at www.otan.us or contact us by phone or email. And thank you again for watching today's OTAN Tech Talk. <laughs>